Hello, this video is not for kids. While this video features children's animation and is intended for general audiences, it is a discussion about the adults that create children's animation. And to prove this video is not for kids, behold, he's naked. Thanks for watching. Here's a question for you. Does children's animation need to be educational? I would argue no, but it should at least have substance. A while ago, there was a kid's show called Word Girl that aired on PBS. I didn't watch it growing up, so I have no nostalgia for it, but I watched it as an adult recently, and I actually really liked it. The humor and writing has this cadence to it that resembles some adult animated shows, and when you learn that many of the writers had previously written for The Onion and Family Guy, that all makes sense. Just in case any of you villains were thinking of committing a crime... <laughs> Word Girl was created with the intention that kids are a lot smarter than what we give them credit for. And it shows. I think children's media can sometimes be condescending to children in a way that I don't think is entirely necessary, even at a preschool age. Having taught kids at summer camps myself, kids are totally capable of understanding complex ideas if explained right. They just get distracted easily because school can be a little repetitive and boring. Kids want to learn, but they want to be in control of what they learn, and can recognize when someone is trying to trick them into learning. So, children's animation can be a very effective way to get kids interested in a subject, but you have to do it in a way that's entertaining as well. A show needs something to pull kids in, like a good plot or jokes, but it should also engage their brain in some way. This is effectively what I mean when I say that a show should have substance. A kid's show can, and ideally should, be educational in some way, but it doesn't need to overwhelm everything else. It shouldn't get in the way of a good joke or a fun plot. And that's what Word Girl is. It's snarky and clever with a lot of super funny jokes, but it's also educational, without it being the sole focus of the show, teaching kids definitions of words, and then using those words in the context of a plot or joke several other times in the episode. Anyone know the definition of devour? Yes, Phil! Uh, no. Word Girl doesn't have word-related superpowers. She's basically just Superman, except that she likes vocabulary. She's a nerd. She likes explaining the definitions of words. It's not trying to teach you everything it possibly can in 11 minutes. It's just trying to be a funny, normal cartoon, and that's what makes it fun to watch. And that's the right way to do it, in my opinion. Teach something, but don't be obvious or condescending about it. It should still be fun to watch. Again, kids want to be in control of what they learn. They come for the substance of the show, the story, jokes, characters, whatever, and then along the way, they discover what makes those subjects fun to learn about through the story and characters. The educational aspects can be minor, as long as it engages kids' brains and teaches them something. Substance. I'll talk about what I mean by substance here in a minute, but first, I've got some posters to put up. Again, this video is sponsored by Displate. Displates are unique metal posters that hang on your wall with magnets. No power tools needed. Instead of canvas or paper posters, printing on metal gives them a nice shine and a sleeker look while still having incredible print quality. I took close-up photos of each display I picked out to show you just how detailed the print gets. All these prints were super tightly packaged and shipped in just a few days from the European Union. And they're all hand-signed on the back and even hollow stamped for quality. They're official partners with tons of games, movies, and shows like Marvel, Star Wars, Sonic the Hedgehog, and there's thousands of individual artists who have uploaded their own artwork, like this one. All you've got to do is clean your wall, apply some sticky tape, stick the magnet on, and just hang it right up. It's super fast, and you can always remove it later. In fact, here's me replacing the one from the last video. Since it's all magnets, it's quite literally that easy. I've handpicked a bunch of designs you can pick up by visiting my link in the description below, or by going to displate.com slash doodly, and use code doodly at checkout for a 22% discount off one or two designs, or an even bigger 33% discount off three or more designs. And of course, using my code helps me and the channel out. I was only able to do this a second time because you guys were so nice last time. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into it. So, substance. Whenever I was watching Word Girl for the first time as an adult, knowing that this show has been off the air for almost a decade now, I couldn't help but feel a little sad that Cocomelon and its copycats reign supreme. I'm aware it's not a completely fair comparison. We're talking preschool with Cocomelon versus kindergarten with Word Girl, TVY versus TVY7. But I don't know, maybe I have more confidence that even really young kids can understand what's going on in Word Girl. I don't think a villain named Chuck the Evil Sandwich Making Guy is really that difficult to understand. But even if you disagree, that's besides the point. Because Cocomelon is effectively nothing, despite how incredibly popular it is. It exists solely to keep children's attention with an hour of colors and music. 
because it's originally a YouTube channel, it's literally designed to hold children's attention for as long as possible for the most minimum cost. As a result, it doesn't engage kids in any way. It lacks the substance other kids' shows like it have. I feel like we're trading Sesame Street for this, and that depresses me. Here's another example, Crashbox. Again, we're talking TVY7 against TVY here, but stay with me. Unlike Word Girl, this was a show I grew up with, and I'm pretty sure I watched it around age 5 or 6. It's a mostly stop-motion animated show with probably one of the slickest art styles I've ever seen in kids' media. It's creative, uh, a little unhinged, and super visually engaging like Cocomelon, but actually engages your brain beyond flashy visuals. It tries to teach you something new in every segment, and even then, it's so visually eclectic and fun to watch that you never truly notice you're being taught something. Captain Bones teaches math problems, Think Tank teaches word association, and Revolting Slob, um, well, like Word Girl, he also teaches vocabulary. And then he explodes. I think the way Crashbox goes about education is kind of genius, though. It turns educational questions into challenges, and as a kid, I remember that being really fun and exciting. I wasn't very good at math, but I sure as hell tried to solve the math problems. It gets into that core idea I mentioned earlier. Kids want to be in control of what they learn. They're presented with a challenge to solve without realizing they're learning something. And while I don't think every kid's show needs to be strictly educational, I think Crashbox at least does it right. By the way, you're probably looking at this and thinking the show might be a little scary looking for kids, and maybe you're right. I never had a problem with it as a kid, but there's definitely safer, more wholesome shows out there. That said, it'd be kind of a shame if every kid's animated show looked the same. Recently, there's been a pretty obvious trend of soft, round, 3D animated shows in a lot of kids' media these days, and that's definitely the result of how popular Cocomelon is. And that's a bit of a shame. Anyways, I don't want to say that all kids' media needs to be educational, because I don't think it needs to be. It just needs to be engaging. It should at least challenge the mind in some way, not just be colorful and keep kids' attention so that they shut up and stop talking. If it challenges the mind with fun characters and good jokes, that's cool. If it does it with actual math problems or vocabulary taught by exploding slobs, that's great. If you just want to hold a kid's attention, at least teach them something. And if not, then make them laugh. Don't just make a show about literally nothing to distract kids with colors and music. What I'm saying here is that we did have children's media that was smart, educational, and funny, and it worked. These shows ran for nearly a decade, kids loved it, they won awards, and even if I didn't grow up with it, I can see the value in it as an adult. But just so I don't come across as a boomer vying for the shows from my childhood, we do still have some children's media that's super engaging, modern, and really, really popular, and that's Bluey. Bluey is absolutely brilliant. Not even joking, it's probably one of the best children's cartoons to ever air, and it's literally just some kids playing with their dad every episode. Not strictly educational, but it still has substance. It teaches kids imagination, responsible play, being respectful to others, honesty, kindness, hygiene, just all sorts of things. It doesn't need to stop you in your tracks to tell you what you've learned. It just shows kids how to be nice to each other. The best part is that, because all the kids in the show are so realistically written and voice acted, there's a sense of relatability, where kids see themselves reflected in Bluey's characters. If a kid is acting out, their parents can literally say to them, that's not what Bluey would do, and they'd be right. And I think that's awesome. This is sort of what I mean that kids' programs don't need to be strictly educational, because they can also just have good role models. They can show kids what it means to be a good person, and that being nice to others will reward you back in kindness. Thank God this show is popular in an age where Cocomelon dominates, because it's a show with something actually going on. It's inspiring. It fills me with hope that not all kids' shows are like this. There's still a future for smart, lovingly made kids' shows. You know, in America, there's a massive amount of regulations on children's television, and a lot of children's media is created by publicly funded companies. Word Girl is created by PBS Kids, Sesame Street airs on PBS and is created by the Sesame Workshop, a nonprofit organization, Bluey is funded by the publicly owned ABC, not the Disney one, and the BBC, and I ain't no friend of the government, but the FCC pretty strictly regulates children's TV programming to be at least somewhat educational and engaging, and limits the amount of advertising that can air alongside kids' programming. But Notice I said TV programming. Can you imagine if we lived in a world without all of this? Kids programming would be a wild west, where corporations could create all the children's media they wanted, free to make them as brainless and addictive as possible. 
a world where they don't need to abide by the regulations that created cartoons like Word Girl, Sesame Street, Bluey, or Crashbox, because YouTube and Netflix are considered new media outside of the FCC's control. A world where corporations, funded by gigantic investment firms like Blackstone, can literally test children with a thing they call the Distractatron, recording the moment children look away from the show they're watching. So they can tweak the show to eliminate that variable and hold a child's attention for as long as humanly possible. And all of this because online children's media is completely unrestricted, unregulated, able to do anything they want, generating insane amounts of revenue in comparison to the ever-dwindling viewership and revenue of the publicly funded PBS, which is constantly under threat of having its funding cut entirely. But that would be crazy, right? Okay, I'm exaggerating a little. It's Cocomelon. I know it's not going to end the world. I grew up staying inside, watching cartoons, and playing video games all day. So I know it's not going to destroy them. But I am a little bit disturbed by children's media completely driven by profit funded by mega corporations. The other shows we've talked about today were specifically created to be educational and engaging for kids, funded by nonprofits or publicly owned organizations, or in Crashbox's case, at least regulated to prevent abuse. I would hate to lose all that because I don't think kids deserve to be taken advantage of and manipulated for profit. It's all too easy to dismiss kids and think they'll watch anything. And yeah, maybe they will. But I feel like we have a responsibility to at least make sure that what they watch is at least something that it has substance. They deserve smart, engaging, thoughtful media just like we do. My hope is that programs like Bluey, my own love for Crashbox, and the revived popularity of a show like Word Girl can at least inspire others to think critically about what we're doing and what we're potentially giving up. Cocomelon is designed for profit. It exists to hold children's attention, keep them addicted, and sell merchandise. But there are kids' shows that are made with love and care, designed with kids in mind, that know how smart kids can be. My hope is that we, as adults, can strive to be better about what content our kids consume, both for the adults who make it and the adults that give it to their kids. Because kids deserve it. Thanks for watching.